good morning cadets i welcome you back for the computer science session for class 11th in our, my previous class we have discussed about the cloud computing it is a uh, nothing but uh, delivering of services through internet uh, maybe in the form of servers maybe in the form of database maybe in the form of networking devices whatever it is it is nothing but a delivery or providing services through internet is basically called as cloud computing now basically there is a private as well as the in the previous class we have seen here the pri public cloud and private cloud public cloud is shared virtualized resources publicly it is shared and whereas private clouding is privately shared multiple customers will be present in public okay here cluster of dedicated customers will be there uh, in case of public supports only connectivity over the internet here the connectivity over the internet fiber and separate private networks like wi-fi will also be there in the private clouding okay uh, in case of public uh, clouding is or uh, a public clouding cloud computing is preferred whenever the uh, information of is with less confidential whereas uh, the private clouding is preferred whenever the uh, information should be uh, is a confidential and it should be more secure with this background let us see the types of cloud computing services or cloud service providers one is called as IaaS which stands for infrastructure as a services second one is PaaS that is a platform as a service and the third one is SaaS S A A S that is software as a service let us see these three type of compu uh, cloud computing services cloud computing is not a single piece of technology like a microchip or a cell phone rather is a system primarily comprised of three services number one SaaS software as a service number two IaaS that is infrastructure as a service and number three PaaS that is platform as a service now <coughs> let us see what is exactly the software as a service the SaaS it involves the license of a software application to customer the licenses are typically provided through a pay as you go model or on demand SaaS utilizes the internet to deliver applications which are managed by a third party vendor to its users a majority of SaaS applications run directly through your web browsers which means they do not require any downloads or installations on the client side client side means we end users we are we are called as a clients these type of system can be found in Microsoft Office 365 the Google Apps Dropbox etc so these are what is exactly once again let me revise this what is software as a service it is a license typically provided through a pay as you go model or on demand so if you if you request or if you give a demand for that particular service based on the software applications or along with your web browsers okay these kind of services are provided examples are Microsoft Office 365 and Google apps as well as Dropbox on the other hand what is exactly the infrastructure as a service now this is also a type of cloud computing service it involves a method for delivering everything from operating systems to servers and storage through IP based connectivity as part of an on demand service okay so IP based connectivity that will be a particular unique identity code is, is allotted to each computer which is connected to your network that is what we call it as a IP that is internet protocol based connectivity clients can avoid the need to purchase software or servers and instead procure these resources in an outsourced on-demand service from a cloud provider now what is exactly the meaning of the outsourcing here you rather than 
concentrating on your database or a data or a storage you will outsource it means you will give to a contract to some other company that's what we call as outsourcing on demand service from a cloud provider so popular examples of the as that is infrastructure as a service system includes IBM cloud Microsoft Azure Amazon web services etc so here your database is maintained by some other agency okay authorized by you okay of course you will have a payment based on your service requirement and your service requirements you are going to give your demand accordingly your your the uh, the outsource agency will provide you the cloud computing services that's what it is called as infrastructure as service now the third one the platform as a service it is in short it is known as pass first we have seen software as a service okay then we have seen infrastructure as a service and the third one is platform as a service what is exactly uh, this platform as a service and how it differs from software as a service as well as infrastructure as a service it is considered as the most complex of the three layers of cloud based computing pass shares some similarities with saas the primarily the difference being that instead of delivering software online it is actually a platform for creating software that is delivered via the internet what is exactly the meaning of this its applications are similar to the pass only uh, uh, sorry similar to the saas only that is software as a service the difference is that the instead of delivering a software online it is actually platform for creating software that is delivered via the internet now let us see pass can streamline workflows when multiple developers are working on the same development project if other vendors must be included pass can provide great speed and flexibility to the entire process pass is particularly beneficial if you need to create customized applications this cloud service also can greatly reduce cost and it can simplify some challenges that come up if you are rapidly developing or deploying an app this model includes platforms like force.com and heroku google app engine apache stratos open shifts etc so at least you need to remember what are the types of the cloud computing services available like your infrastructure as a service then software as a service then platform as a service and you need to write at least a one difference among these services and one example which is available as a service okay uh, along with this information now let us move to the next one more computing system that is a grid computing system what is exactly the grid computing how it is different from the cloud computing the grid computing is a group of computers physically connected over a network or with internet to perform a dedicated tasks together such as analyzing e-commerce data and solve a complex problem grids are a form of super virtual computer that solve a particular application rather than calling it as a super computer we call it as a super virtual computer the word virtual it means it acts like a super computer what generally the super computer contains it contains parallel processors the high capacity memory cap memory capacity processor speeds etc there are also uh, we have the higher capacity configuration or specification for the supercomputer here to solve a common problem related to analyzing a e-commerce or any other complex problem rather than one computer grid of computers group of computers will work on that applications and basically acts like a supercomputer therefore the grids are form of super virtual computers as you know that if a given work is done by a individual then it may uh, take more efforts it may have more time required the same work if it is handled by many people at the same time by taking the uh, subgroups of that given problem then definitely the problem may be solved with less effort by each one as well as with the less required time that's what the advantage of grid computing in <coughs> it alleviate multiple computers often geographically distributed but connected by networks to work together to accomplish joint tasks it is typically run on a data grid a set of computers that directly interact with each other to coordinate the 
jobs to coordinate the work to be done by them so you just see here in the image you are seeing here how grid computing works there will be a central node that is also called as a controlling node through which these nodes which are connected in the form of a grid interact each other exchange the information so that uh, they can uh, it will helpful or coordinate them or coordination for solving the problems in a common way that is how the grid formation you just remember that it is nothing but it is a super virtual computer a group of computers a grid of computers the last one we go for the concept in this emerging trends is blockchain technology what is exactly you might have heard about the blockchain technology in recent trends okay how this exactly that blockchain works let us see uh, we'll give an example in the form of analogy a simple analogy for understanding a blockchain technology is a google doc that is google document when we create a document and share it with a group of people the document is distributed instead of copied or transferred there is a difference between copying and distributing okay uh, the distribution means it may be kept at a one place and we may allow the access to many uh, copying or transferring means the duplicate copy of the document will be transferred to many people that is what so that's why it says when we create a document and share it with a group of people the document is distributed instead of copying or transferring this creates a decentralized distribution chain this creates a decentralized distribution chain that gives everyone access to the document at the same time this creates a decentralized distribution chain that gives everyone access to the document at the same time no one is locked out awaiting changes from another party while all modifications to the document are being recorded in real time making changes completely transparent the greatest advantage of this distribution system is the document is available example we are telling here the document is available to many in a real time means simultaneously any change is done by one of the user will automatically reflect in the central node it reflect in the all the others means the updated data the changed data the updated information uh, the the operation done by a particular user is automatically reflected in real time or else recorded in real time and hence the changes done at one place will be transparent completely to all others who are in the blockchain now blockchain technology is most simply defined as a decentralized a distributed ledger that records the origination of a digital asset basically it is called as a digital asset any kinds of the manual records or papers or documents or data or information if it is stored in digital devices it is basically called as a digital asset in now you can say uh, you, uh, another example for you is for example if you go for a sub register officer where property registration takes place selling and purchasing of property so entire document related to that uh, transaction of that property are recorded in the form of scanned forms of every paper every document is stored that it becomes a digital asset so blockchain technology is most simply defined as a decentralized a distributed ledger that records the origination of a digital asset blockchain is most simply defined as a decentralized distributed ledger technology that records the provenance or origination of a digital asset now the copyright and ownership laws on music videos blogs and other online content are must in today's to day to day life right isn't it because you are the originator of a music you are the originator of that video album and you you have your own blog okay and some sometime your uh, content you are make it online to available to others then the issue of ownership as well as copyright will come these laws can be made secure through blockchain technology the black chain technology will also help you to implement the copyright and ownership on your uh, what you can say the content these laws can be made secure through blockchain technology digital content downloads would be a good option as it ensures that the artist or the creator of the content 
also gets their fair share. Blockchain would also provide a real-time and authentic royalty distribution data to content creators and musicians. What do you mean by royalty distribution? Suppose you are the owner of a particular content and <coughs> if at all you want to distribute it or share it to the other users, they need to pay a, a certain amount which is fixed as a royalty amount. So for your product, for your ownership, if anybody want to utilize it, you need to pay some royalty amount to a particular the owner who has created that content. That is what called it as a royalty distribution. Finally, we'll see in this block diagram how the blockchain works. Please go through this image. Step number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there is a computer. In step number one, you can say a transaction is requested. Okay, in a blockchain, a particular node, a transaction is requested. Second, a block that represents the transaction is created. The moment a transaction, a request for a transaction is received in the blockchain system, immediately a block is created which is representing a, a kind of transaction that would like to take place there. In step 3 what happens you see, the block is sent to every node in the network because each and every one who are there on the network, each node, each user, each client will receive that black block so that each user should know what kind of transaction is coming, what kind of request is coming from so and so user. Step number four, nodes validate the transaction. You can see the tick marks in the blocks here. Okay, you can see the tick marks here. That indicates that yes, maybe a, one of the node may be a, a mobile, one may be node may be a, a workstation, another node may be a, a computer, another node may be a laptop, etc. Whatever it is. Since all these devices are in a network, the transaction which was originally created by a particular node, the its transaction is recorded in the form of a block and that block con contents of that block will be sent to every node so that they should know it and then after knowing it, the ticking means what here? Yes, the transaction of the request created by a particular user is known to us. We know who has sent that request and what is the content of that request. Now in step number, further what will happen before going to the step number 5, nodes receive a reward for the proof of work. What is the meaning? Nodes receive a reward for the proof of work. See it is like a token system, isn't it? If, if anything you pay before purchasing anything, you will receive a token. That token if you give, you will get your things. Similarly, the moment the nodes receive the reward for the proof of work means whatever the work has been done for that they receive a token in the form of a reward. Then in step number 5 the block is added to the existing blockchain. Already your blockchain contains so many such blocks which are created, which are requested, which are provided by so many other users who are present in the network. The recently created block will also be added to the existing blockchain and finally the transaction is complete. The moment when the when the moment when that particular uh, block which is uh, having new transaction is added to this chain then the transaction is complete. So this is how the blockchain works. You just remember these steps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I will repeat once again. Step number 1 a transaction is requested then a block is created to represent that transaction and step number 3 that will be sent to everybody we are in the node, then every node is validated, then the nodes receive a reward for the proof of work and then step number 5 that block is added and step number 6 the transaction is completed. That's how we end with this emerging trends, that's all the computer system organizations all together so far we have covered that is computer system overview, the data representation chapter, the, blo um, the boolean logic and uh, the emerging trends and these all things will be there for your upcoming uh, monthly test which is scheduled on 12th. So you prepare well, your question paper contains both objective as well as descriptive. Already I have solved you so many questions of objective type questions in my previous classes at the end of every chapter. Please go through them as well as you may have a questions of similar type, maybe a fill in the blanks, maybe a 
may be a fill in the blanks or it may be a objective of multiple choice questions okay at this point of time i would like to stop here and would like to continue my next class okay tomorrow right thank you